everyone, welcome back to 4.44 p.m. I've got a special video, end of the year video I'm gonna do here. This is a first for me, as it is going to be a state of the collection video. So I've never done one of these before, but I saw a lot of people doing them for the end of the year on their channels, and I thought that, you know, it would be uh, interesting for me to do one of my own. And you'll have to forgive me, I'm uh, recovering from a uh, head cold, or halfway through a head cold, I should say, so my voice is a little messed up, and I got the sniffles, but um, just try and bear with me here, besides feeling like crap, I should say. Um, anyhow, um, yeah, I wanted to do one of these and share with you guys my collection, um, which you know, may not be nothing that special, um, you know, to uh, most, but to me, it's very special because it's my collection, a collection that I have um, built myself. And, um, ooh, real quick, just wanted to show off my stickers. As you guys all know, I have my, you know, 444 PM Loom stickers um, that glow in the uh, dark, um, just like Seiko Loom. And then I've also got these new ones here because I thought they were retro cool. Um, they're the uh, holographic glitter background so that's a new one I got so if you uh, you know order a uh, custom build for me you might end up with one of these in your box all right okay anyway so just to start off um, I've had a lot of watches in my lifetime um, you know not like big expensive ones just maybe one big expensive one that I had Oh, also, please forgive this light. This light that I'm using is uh, temporary until I find something that's better. Um, for some reason or another, it keeps deciding to flicker between really bright and not so bright. But anyhow, just to give you a little backstory, um, I've been collecting watches, you know, on and off uh, for the past, you know, couple of decades. Uh, my brother kind of got me really into the Seiko Divers um, because he got me my real first Seiko Diver uh, back in the mid to late 90s, which was a SKX-173. And um, that's the watch that I pretty much fell in love with. But um, I have to give the um, props to my dad, who's no longer with us, uh, for providing me with the um, admiration and um, enthusiasm to want to collect and appreciate watches because he always wore a watch, and uh, I'll get to uh, that a little bit later. But on and off throughout the years, um, I've had, you know, uh, I've amassed a large collection, and then I always seem to narrow it down. And for some reason or another, I always seem to get it down to about 18 to 20 watches. Um, I think that has something to do with my OCD um, and the fact that I, you know, have to have all the holes in my watch case filled because um, I have this, um, you know, weird fetish, I guess, with filling holes. Uh, <laughs> anyhow, um, so right now my collection stands at about, um, uh, I guess it's like about 20 right now as it is. I mean, I have, you know, more watches, but they're either projects or uh, ones that I'm, you know, not adding to my collection that I'm going to be selling or haven't decided if I'm going to keep it or not. So anyhow, um, as for, you know, the type of watches that I collect, they're mainly affordable tool watches. Um, I have owned one uh, Rolex in um, my um, lifetime, and that was uh, recently, um, within the last five years, and it was a 16610 Rolex uh, Submariner uh, from, I think, the year 2000, and it had the aluminum bezel. And I got it from uh, Bob's Watches in Newport Beach, um, who, if you don't know, you can check out uh, Teddy uh, Baldazar's channel. He's got a lot of interviews that he does with uh, Paul, um, the CEO of uh, Bob's Watches. And um, that's a really good guy down there, a really good place to get um, pre-owned and vintage Rolexes. But anyhow, um, you know, I'm just not the type of guy that um, should be having you know, an expensive uh, luxury watch or lug I, I guess you could, should say expensive tool watch like that. Um, that's more of a high-end tool watch. But um, yeah, I'm, I just, 
not the type of guy. I like to have some stuff that I can wear and, you know, not worry about whether or not it's going to get, you know, beat up or broken or um, stolen or anything like that. So, uh, you know, circumstances were that I needed money and I ended up selling it because, you know, I'm a divorced father I'm taking care of, you know, kids on my own and, uh, well, teenagers, I should say. And uh, most of them are grown and out of the house. But uh, anyhow, you know, I have to make ends meet and get them things. And so, you know, it just wasn't something that I needed to have the time. But maybe someday, because I do like, you know, Rolexes a lot. And there's a lot of other brands out there that I like that are expensive. IWC, um, you know, uh, Oris, you know, all kinds of, um, even Seiko has some really expensive pieces that I'd like to have. But it's just not the right time of my life. So eventually, hopefully, um, when the kids are all grown and on their own, maybe they'll buy me one and, uh, you know, as a gift for all that I've done for them, but I'm not going to hold my breath over that. Anyhow, <laughs> let's get on with the show here and, uh, you know, share this with you guys so that you guys can, uh, get on with enjoying your New Year's Eve, which I'm sure you already are, but at least I'll be able to get on and try to enjoy mine, even though I'm sick. So here we go. So this is a, uh, watch box I got off of Amazon just to try and start filling up some, um, you know, or put my watches in some sort of protection, I should say. So I got this fairly cheap on Amazon. Um, anyhow, I guess we could start off with, uh, with down here. So this is pretty much how the watch modding started for me. It started off with, um, in, in Victa's, which I no longer do. I, I stick strictly to Seiko. But, um, you know, I wanted to uh, try it out. And so I started, you know, getting into the modding, you know, thing and, you know, checking out forums and YouTube videos and everything else. And, um, you know, ended up studying a lot about watchmaking and, um, you know, practicing and practicing and practicing and, you know, just messing around with it until I got really good. And I've always been mechanically inclined and, you know, like to tinker with things. So it sort of came nat came naturally to me and uh I, you know got the knack for it so i you know just do it but anyhow um this is one of my earlier ones this is a um invicta pro diver that i made and uh this is actually several watches combined into one um as you can see i have ground off the um and polished the side here that had the invicta on it as well as the crown they had the Invicta logo, and then I have a um, Rolex style um, oyster style bracelet on it, um, and a Rolex style case back. Um, the dial is from a uh, SNZH uh, 55, I think. Um, and then this bezel insert came from off of eBay, and I had to actually grind it down a little bit to make it fit in here. I uh, replaced the crystal. Oops, sorry. That's my compressor going off there. Let me turn that off. Um, anyhow, uh, the insert is, um, uh, or I was on the crystal. The crystal is just a regular mineral crystal that I put in there. Kind of polished out the inside of the chapter ring a little bit. Um, the movement is a uh, 7S36 movement that I put in here um, with the black day and date date. And uh, I hate when the date's about to turn over. It always seems like it stops right there. And then you got that date that's all crooked on there. Anyhow, um, the hands are from a 1960s Seiko that my son found at a um, little uh, secondhand thrift store in Randsburg, which is an old mining town out in the desert. We were on a jeeping trip with my sister and happened to, uh, you know, stop off in the bar there. And my son wanted to wander around town and he ended up, I gave him some money. He ended up coming back with the Seiko watch he wanted me to try and restore for him. And I was not able to do that because it was just too far gone, but I did salvage the hands out of it and put them in this build to try and, uh, you know, memorialize or, you know, sentimentalize that. Um, I don't even know if that's a word, but I'm going to use it that, um, trip and uh you know incorporate a part of that watch into this build so anyhow there's that one that's an invicta invicta pro diver and then 
This is another one that I did. Um, this one I actually uh, completely took apart. This is the original Invicta bracelet. And I beat blasted the entire thing because I saw some of the watches that uh, Raven was putting out and really liked the uh, bead blasted look. And so I, um, you know, went ahead and did that with this one. Same thing, removed the Invicta branding off of it. Um, it's got a double dome sapphire crystal in it with a uh, blue AR, a Degas dial. Um, I can't remember where this insert came from either, but I think I got it off of eBay. These hands are off of a uh, SNZG, um, I believe, or, or so, one of those little Seiko fives. But anyhow, um, and it had a different set of hands on it from one second closer, which um, ended up coming off because I just wasn't happy with them and put this set of hands on there, which goes really good with it. But And my brother really, really wants this watch for some reason because it's one of my earlier builds and he wants to have it. And so he bought another set of the one second closer hands and said that he's going to um, give those to uh, me to put on there and then he wants me to give him the watch. So I don't know. He usually finds a way of getting what he wants, but I'm kind of like tempted to hold on to that because it's one of my earlier ones. Um, all right, so moving along here. You're going to notice I have a lot of the SKX style slim cases, um, slim case divers. That's because uh, I really like that design. That's my um, favorite uh, style diver and uh, was also, you know, the first diver that I ever had real Seiko diver and so obviously I'm going to gravitate towards that design and uh, this is a 173 that I uh, got and restored um, now I have quite a few of these I think I have uh, one two three I think I have currently have three of them and I've had like six at one point of 173s um, this one is one of the early dials the Singapore dials um and uh i have the original movement to it you can see on the back there it says movement singapore it is from i am guessing january of uh 2003 or i don't think it would be 93 but anyhow um the movement i have the original movement but when i did the restoration of this and i think another one that i got i just went ahead and put a brand new 7s26c movement in it um, rather than service the original movement uh, because the 7s26a's are really um, good movements compared to the the 7s26c's uh, and i want to keep as little wear and tear on those movements as possible because someday i eventually plan to um, you know, get those movements completely serviced and then, um, put them in, uh, back in here. But anyhow, for now, it's got a, uh, you know, correct, just not, um, correct to the year, but it's got the correct movement in it being a 7S26. But anyhow, that one is uh, pretty much all, uh, stock, um, but restored with new crystal gaskets, um, seals, um, original insert and bezel so that's that then this is a uh, skx 399 that my brother uh, picked up for me from ebay and it was a seller in great britain which not really a good source for um, getting the seiko divers from because you run into the same issues as getting them from you know the philippines or the uh, south pacific uh, asia area um, with them being, you know, heavily Frankenstein or, you know, pieced together, not original. This one um, had severe damage to it. Um, the case wasn't in too bad a shape. I mean, it's you can see it's got a lot of wear and, on it and everything. But I restored this one, took it completely apart. New seals, gasket, new movement. Um, the dial had a lot, had a lot of uh, damage to it, but I was able to restore the dial enough to... Um, you know, bring it back and make it look good. Uh, pardon the interruption there. I had a, uh, some noise in the background and I thought that was a good opportunity to go wet my whistle since all the talking's kind of... <sighs> Give me a little dry mouth there. But anyhow, this is another SKX that um, 
my brother actually bought and wanted me to mod for him, but um, he had, hold on. I don't know why this thing keeps doing this. There we go. All right, anyhow, this is a SKX that my brother bought and, and uh, wanted me to mod for him, but it was pretty uh, heavily beat up. So much so that the uh, only way to make it look decent was to uh, bead blast the case. And um, I still wasn't happy with, you know, doing it as a build for him. So I had a bunch of uh, parts that I had laying around that were, um, you know, parts that I had, I had just as spares or didn't know if I was going to use or not. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and put a build together and make that a work watch. So this is one that I wear quite frequently to uh, work. I do have a day job. Uh, just so all of you know, um, and, uh, anyhow, yeah, it's not the most pleasant of jobs, but hey, you know what, like I said, I'm a single dad, you know, divorced, doing everything on my own, so, gotta do what I gotta do, anyhow, um, yeah, so I went ahead and, you know, used this dial that I had that had some little flaws in it, and the handset that I had taken off of, uh, this watch, actually, um, which I'll get to next, but anyhow, this one I wear quite frequently, I really like it, um, and I know that I can beat it up and, you know, don't have to really worry about it, so, that brings us to this, which is an, um, SNZG17, I think, um, yeah, anyhow, uh, I wasn't happy with the dial that was in it, um, even though this was the J model, which had the fully loomed dial originally with the numbers and everything and stuff, but I just had this idea come into my mind of, um, you know, that I had seen this, they called this a BFS, uh, it stands for Big Effing Seiko, um, and that's what this dial came out of, and I um, really liked that dial and thought it would go really good in this watch because everything matched up perfectly and I was able to track one down and put that in there. It has the original movement in it. Uh, I didn't change out the crystal. I left the original crystal um, and uh, put this nice little canvas um, strap on it. Still got the clear case back. These hands um, were a handset that I found that I really liked because they matched the uh, gloss black that's on the dial. And so I was able to... Uh, get those to work. They needed a little crimping in order to fit though, because they weren't the exact size for, um, the, uh, you know, Seiko di inner diameter of what they use on their posts for the hands. But anyhow, I made it work. This light is really starting to annoy me now. Yeah, I don't know what's wrong with it. All right, moving along. Okay, so this is another um, 173 that I have. This one is actually one that I have heavily modded. And uh, this is actually the first one that I got um, after I was able to find out what the model number was of the one that my brother had got me. I, as I mentioned before, my brother had got me my first uh, official real Seiko diver, and it was the 173. And I was able to find that out by going through old pictures. And I found a couple of old pictures with, uh, you know, my wrist showing in it of me wearing the watch. Oh, man, I don't have a watch on right now. That's because I took it off to put it in the uh, case so I could present it in this video. So don't think I was slacking there. Um, anyhow, so uh, like I was saying, that old picture, I was able to, you know, zoom in on the wrist and identify the, uh, you know, dial and everything about the dial. And then that was how I was able to actually, um, you know, figure out that that was the 173 that I had originally have. And that would have been one of the early 173s as well. And I no longer have that watch because at some point, somewhere around, I'm going to say 2002 to 2004, um, it was, all right, pardon another interruption. Um, so yeah, I was able to figure out that it was a 173 from looking at those old photos. And then once I figured that out, I was like, I got to get one because what I had gotten when I remembered that I had that, you know, original Seiko diver that my brother got me, I thought that the 007 was it. And so I had ordered a 007 and was wearing the 007 for a long time. And, uh, it always just seemed like something wasn't right. I was like, this isn't fitting, you know, what my brain remembers about my diver. So, you know, um, it just never felt right. 
which made you know me uh, remember to look through old pictures and then eventually find out you know that it obviously wasn't the 007 that it was the 173 with the you know square markers on it um so anyhow once i found that out i tracked down uh 173 locally well not too locally uh, i'm in orange county and i found a uh, navy guy down in chula vista that was stationed down in san diego and he was selling his 173 um because he was getting a, a new turtle and um he was selling it pretty cheap um i should say affordably but anyhow um he was selling it, and so I uh, went down there with my son, picked it up, and uh, I was really happy to get it. It was in, like, immaculate condition, but, again, my OCD won't, you know, leave things alone, so I completely took the watch apart. Ended up upgrading the movement to an NH36. Um, went with a jumbo crown that I had custom um, engraved by a Seiko crown, and it has the uh, TCB emblem on there, taking care of business in a flash with the lightning bolt. Um, I'm a huge Elvis fan. And so that was, uh, you know, always been a part of my life. Uh, one of the first tattoos I ever got was that logo. And then I also, you know, have gone by that motto my whole life, which is taking care of business. Cause that's what I try to do with my life is take care of everything. And obviously I'm still doing that. Um, anyhow, I did that, uh, with the crown, um, Sapphire flat crystal, um, black day and date wheel, and then uh, I think that's about it. Yeah. So anyway, this one has been modded. I'm going to skip that one for now. Now, going into 007s, um, I don't have my original 007 that I had bought. The one that I thought was the uh, same as the original diver that I had gotten from my brother when I was younger. Um, that one I actually modded into a different watch and ended up selling to a guy in the United Kingdom. But... um. <clears throat> that brings us to this 007 dial. Uh, I had recently had a customer uh, do a trade with me for um, some work, and I got a case from him and uh, had that bead blasted. And then um, I had another case that I had bead blasted, which is one of my cases, the 444 SS cases. And uh, I was debating on whether or not I wanted to use that up actual Seiko case or one of my cases uh, to do a build with I ended up deciding to use my case um, and then this dial I had it was completely you know pretty much ruined basically and I was going to throw it away but I decided to uh, mess around with it and try out one of my techniques I do for coloring loom and was able to color the loom on it and then give the uh, dial a texture that matched the insert and then I did the same with these hands and uh, built a watch out of it. Um, one thing, though, that I wasn't happy with is this bezel that I used was a little too nicked up um, for, uh, you know, what I'd like to use on one of my, you know, builds. But I put it on here as a temporary uh, fix um, just until I can get the new one on. But anyhow, I'm getting... A new stock bezel bead blasted and then I have uh, this is actually an insert from one of the uh, new Seiko 5 um, sports watches the uh, 5kx and this one in particular is off of an SRPD 55 and I have uh, another one coming that I'm going to put into the new bezel so that it's not all I don't know if you can see it's got like little um, parts on there that are like bent up and then this got some nicks and chips in it and stuff but anyhow it's a fun little build I did um, just to have something completely unique and different as far as a diver goes. And I really liked that the chapter ring, this chapter ring actually is the original chapter ring out of my, uh, 007 that I had. And it's an unusual one in that it's not white markers. Um, like all the other 007s I see, this one actually has silver. So I don't know what was up with that 007 that I had, um, but for some reason or another, it had silver, um, tick marks on the chapter ring. But anyhow, those match the silver numbers on the insert and uh, also the silver finish of the uh, bead blasting that has been done. Now, moving along to another one of my cases. This is the uh, 444 BLK for PVD black cases. And this is 
one that I built myself um, using one of my uh, engraved case backs. And uh, this was a, a kit that a customer had traded me um, from a watch that I did for them. They uh, had a Degas, I guess is what it's called, or Degas, I say Degas, but I guess it's Degas. Um, they have a kit with this crystal, the um, insert, and the crystal gasket that they sell. <clears throat> and uh, I used that in this. This bezel, I really like the way this turned out. That's a Stargate 2 um, dial and a set of SKX hands on it. And then the chapter ring is actually out of one of the new 5KXs. But it's got the signed, uh, oops, signed crown on there. Hold on. Okay, anyhow, teenagers, man, they just uh, don't know when to leave you alone sometimes. All right, so getting back to this, this is one that I built with my, um, you know, PVD coated uh, black cases, um, got the crafter blue strap on it. I didn't really care for these straps in the beginning until I had a customer have me do a build for them and put a strap that they had gotten for their watch on their watch. And then once I saw it in person, I was like, wow, that's a really nice strap. And I got to use that on uh, one of my watches. And so now I use them on all kinds of builds and I'm really happy with the quality and I think they're a really great strap. So anyhow, that's uh, what I did with this watch. I really like this one. Um, always wanted to have a uh, kind of like all blacked out watch and uh, just never really got around to doing one for myself until recently and built this and I'm really happy with it. So there's that one. All right, and then we come to this right here. This is a little build that um, my son, my youngest boy, he wanted to uh, try his hand at uh, doing a mod. And so I pulled some uh, pieces, you know, some parts together, I should say, a dial hands and uh, movement and everything and stuff and had this case and the strap and everything. And I, you know, was like, okay, here, we can use this to do a build. So I sat him down and basically walked him through the entire process, um, using, you know, all my tools and everything and showing him how to use them and stuff. And he really enjoyed it and uh, did it. And he was like, there you go, dad. Now you can sell that one and make some money and everything. And I was like, okay, yeah, sure. And then, um, he's like, but if you do, I want, you know, part of the money, even though I, I basically paid for all the parts. Um, but he was like, I, I want half and everything. So I just gave him, um, you know, like I think 50 or 60 bucks and was like, there you go. I'll just give it to you now. So you don't have to wait. And then I kept the watch and he was like, well, why, why did you keep the watch dad? He's like, you haven't sold it yet. Why'd you give me money? And I was like, well, actually we did that together. And that was, you know, something memorable for me and you as well. And I want to keep the watch and always have that to cherish. So I'm not selling it. And then he was like, oh, wow, that's cool. Um, so yeah, I still have it. I don't really wear it, wear it though because I have, you know, kind of a bigger frame and wrists um, being that I'm 6'4". And, uh, you know, my wrist, not as big as, you know, it could be, but um, for a guy my my height or whatever, but uh, it's a seven and a half inch wrist. And, you know, I just don't like the way smaller watches look on me. So it looks like a little tiny, like mole on my hand when, you know, I'm standing there <laughs> anyhow um this one right here is uh casio this is a work watch that i have i always have liked these like uh retro um you know g-shock squares um i think i had one when i was like in you know middle school or something like that or probably had like a actual knockoff one or something because we didn't have a lot of money growing up and so I usually would get like the little $5 watches at uh, the little turnstile thing on the counter at Kmart or something like that. But anyhow, um, this one I found online for 24 bucks. It had a, it was pretty much destroyed. I mean, the, the plastic, you know, outer plastic sheath that goes over the uh, face here and the strap and everything. The, even the uh, um, buckle was completely destroyed on it. Um, and the crystal had scratches and stuff. So I polished out the crystals best I could. It still got some some uh, scratches in there, but I cleaned it up pretty good. And then went on eBay and found a uh, 
actual OEM, uh, genuine Casio, you know, sheath and um, strap and everything and stuff for this model, the exact model, and put it together. And uh, I wear this one to work a lot. Um, and it keeps perfect time, obviously. And uh, it's just a fun little piece to have. So that's uh, one case down. Now let's get to the other one. Okay, moving along now. This is uh, one of the first real, like, nice watch boxes that I ever have had. Um, watch cases, I should say. And uh, this was given to me by my oldest boy, um, who had it uh, custom made and engraved with uh, Nay's TCB. Nay is my nickname, uh, short for Nathan. I've always been called Nay, you know, because I didn't really ever really take to uh, Nate or anything like that. So my grandma always said, hey, Nay, Nay. And uh, so Nay is what I went by. Anyhow, TCB, obviously, taking care of business. And uh, my son had that made for me. So I really like that. I appreciated that. And uh, that's a cool, uh, cool watch box. So now moving on to these watches this is a um build that i did using the uh, crystal times um conversion case that fits all the skx parts but it's the uh, same size as like the srp turtle and uh so anyhow i had this genuine turtle bracelet from a, a turtle seiko turtle um, srp and uh, decided to use it on this watch um then I had the case, housed it with, or, um, housed a NH36 movement in it. This is another Stargate 2 dial, um, like the one that's in that black watch that I showed you. I uh, really like this crown that I found and put on here. It's got the uh, Seiko, you know, logo on there. Um, got this handset from Yoboki's. It's the uh, 6105 handset that he sells. And then, of course, I'd love this uh, Seiko-style ceramic insert. It's called the uh, uh, Stealth Insert from uh, DLW. Um, I just really, really like that insert. For some reason, I have it on, as you can see, two other builds down here. But anyhow, um, this crystal that's in this is a really cool crystal that I found on Crystal Times. And it's a low-dome crystal for the SKX but it looks really good um, and close to the original crystal that would have been used in the uh, Captain Willard 6105. So this is the watch that I built um, where I made the video saying it's my modern day interpretation of the um, Captain Willard. But uh, anyhow, yeah, there's that one. Oh, you know what? That reminds me. Hold on a second. I totally skipped this one. I said I would go back to it, and I totally forgot about it. So this is an AquaDive um, NOS 77 is what they call it. And this particular watch is made by a company that had gone out of business back in, I think, the late 70s, early 80s. Anyhow, they were really big back in the 60s making dive watches, apparently, and, um, you know, were uh, really uh, good dive watches, in fact. And then when, you know, the whole uh, quartz revolution came around and uh, was, you know, making it really hard for watch companies to stay in business, um, this company struggled and tried to keep up and, you know, made a few quartz watches. And in fact, they even made a uh, LED, one of the, you know, early LED numeral watches where it basically just had the uh, red, you know, light up LED numbers on the face. And uh, it was a quartz watch. And uh, that was actually what this case would have been used for. So there was a guy that I guess bought the company name within, you know, the early 2000s or, you know, around like, you know, a decade ago or so, and uh, decided to put the company back in business. And, uh, apparently was able to acquire a bunch of their, uh, you know, cases that had never been used. So they were all new old stock cases and, uh, he retrofitted them to have a, uh, you know, ETA Swiss movement in it. And, um, he made dials for it that with the Aquadive, you know, branding on there and Aquadive crowns and has an escape valve and everything. 
and uh, got a really nice bezel action on this one. But I got it because uh, I was really drawn to the fact that it has that funky vintage retro look. Very, you know, big, giant, chunky diver, which I really think is cool. But it just really looks good on, on wrist. And uh, the NOS 77 was the, the big selling point because that's my birth year. So I'm going to actually be turning 43 on January 2nd. Um, and so this was kind of like a early birthday present to myself this year uh, amongst a lot of other things that I've claimed are early birthday presents to myself but anyhow this is a birth year watch for me um, and uh, even though it really wasn't actually finished being made in 1977 but at least the case was so anyhow <coughs> excuse me that was that watch I wanted to show you guys the aqua dive it's pretty cool all right put that off to the side Moving on now, so this is, I forget the reference number exactly, but this is one of the um, new SRPD 5KX uh, non, I should say non dive watches, but this one actually is a, an official dive watch now because I housed it in one of my 444 SS cases. So it has screw down crown and uh, you know stainless steel solid case back. Um, I decided to take all the guts out of the uh, 5KX and house it in this watch um, or case and then changed out the bezel. This is a one second closer bezel um, and then uh, obviously got a uh, sapphire crystal in it and another one of these um, DLW inserts that I really like and then that's on a, uh, I guess this is a strap code oyster style. Um, bracelet with a genuine Seiko clasp. All right, so there's that one. And then here is another turtle that I have. This one was originally an SRP775, the two tone gold um, turtle. And uh, I had used the guts in a build for another watch that I did for a customer. And I uh, wasn't sure what I was going to do with it and then I just started like kind of tinkering around with it and um, came up with uh, this idea that this Seiko 5 dial I had from another watch that I had uh, taken the movement out of would look really good in here um, so I put it in and I uh, really liked the way it looked and really actually fell in love with this build I mean it's you know got the uh, little black and white um, set up there on the day and date wheel and uh, just completely different, unique build, but I really like this one. So, it's another one of my turtles. And then this is a, a, a absolute knockoff, complete um, fake, but it's pretty cool. I just wanted to do something different, and uh, I bought this little case off of eBay for $115 and it came with a you know sterile 6105 style dial and the NH35 movement and I was like wow for $115 you can't beat a watch case and movement you know and a set of hands um, I could take that and make it into like a little knockoff homage of the uh, you know Captain Willard the uh, 6105 so I went to work on it and uh, you know changed a little bit of things around on it but um my brother actually had this this uh, 6105 aftermarket dial that he had gotten off of eBay and he gave it to me. And I, I was able to uh, take the dial feet off and use um, dial adhesive to you know position it, everything, which I don't like to do with my builds. I almost always do my builds with uh, the correct dial for the correct movement. But since this was my own that I was doing, I made the exception to uh, mess around with it. Went ahead and uh, did that and then I Measured everything out, found out that this uh, sapphire crystal would fit it. So I ordered that up and then used a genuine um, Seiko SRP um, turtle gasket because it's the same size um, dimensions as that. So it has a genuine Seiko crystal gasket with this sapphire crystal. And then um, the insert was a little bit of a challenge because obviously it had a Seiko style aluminum insert in it that was really chintzy. And I wasn't happy with that at all. And so I 
I tried finding another Seiko style to try and complete the overall, like, you know, copycat look of the 6105, but wasn't able to find one that would um, lay, you know, flush in this uh, bezel because of the way that this bezel is. And so I, I was able to track down this one um, that's got the sub style look to it and uh, it ended up being perfect match with the crystal and everything. And I think it really makes the watch overall look really nice. I mean, it turned this little $115, which obviously it's not 115 anymore with the upgrades I did to it, but it made it look really fantastic. And then, you know, oh, some people are celebrating uh, New Year's already. They're lighting off firework crackers. Um, anyhow, I put it on a uh, Uncle Seiko um, waffle strap, and uh, I think it looks really good. I actually wear this one quite a bit. So... There's that one, and uh, this is running long, so I'm gonna try and speed things up here. And I got this is another um, early Singapore dial, uh, 173 um, on a uh, oyster style uh, bracelet. This one is all stock, um, all original except for the movement has been you know replaced with a new movement. Um, but I restored it all new seals, gaskets, everything and stuff, new crystal. But anyhow, that's another uh, 173. And then this is another uh, slim case. This is actually a 7002 transitional case. So this is when the 7002 transitioned from no longer being around to, you know, the um, 7S 26 taking over. And then, uh, you know, having basically the, you know, same design case as the uh, SKX case. But anyhow, um, yeah, so this is the 7002 transitional on a genuine Seiko Jubilee bracelet. And this has been completely restored. All original, has the original movement that has been serviced. Um, so yeah, this one is all original. And uh, it's pretty cool. Only thing about this is that when I was in the process of restoring it and cleaning it, I got moisture um on it and so it kind of like took out a little bit of the loom back there so i need to get that pop this off and then uh remove that insert and backfill that with some uh, correct loom but uh, it's nothing i'm worried about right now i mean it looks good all right so that's those two boxes and now to finish things up i bring in some of my you know um cherished pieces so this is my dad's Citizen Quartz 7 dress watch that he had. Um, he got this back in the 80s, uh, early 80s, and uh, it's in really good shape. And uh, he wore this um, not very often because he didn't like dressing up. My dad was not somebody that liked to uh, dress up, and neither am I. I mean, I do you know, actually clean up very nice when I do dress up, but I'm more of a Levi's t-shirt, you know, and, uh, I love my Converse Chucks, you know, it's my go-to shoe, but, uh, anyhow, um, I was able to get this, you know, when he passed along with another one of uh, his watches that he did wear quite frequently. And, uh, I keep this one, you know, nice and I'll pass it on to my children. But, um, yeah, that was one of his watches right there. He had a lot of other watches, but obviously I'm not his only child. So things got, you know, divided up amongst us. But uh, I was lucky enough to score the uh, ultimate prize. And that would be his uh, April 1978 Bullhead Chronograph. This is the uh, 6138-0049. It's not the one that says Speedmaster on it. This actually says the Chronograph Automatic. And uh, this watch was in shambles when I got a hold of it. The original bracelet was completely, uh, you know, in pieces. Couldn't be salvaged. Um, and uh, the watch wasn't working. It had a broken crystal. You know, it obviously had a lot of, you know, wear and tear on it. But, um... I took it to a local watchmaker before I got into, you know, watchmaking and build, uh, building, you know, mods and all that stuff. And 
had taken it to this guy that was supposed to be reputable and had him, you know, go through the watch. And uh, I had picked up some parts on eBay. You know, I wanted to keep it all original, but I, you know, picked up some pushers because I think one of these pushers was bent. And I told him only use the pusher if it's a, you know, um, needs to be changed out, you know, keep it all original. I said, don't do anything to the aesthetics of the watch. Don't polish it. Do none of that. I want to keep it all original. Well, I don't know what he did, but he got it working and he left the crystal, you know, cracked because obviously he probably couldn't find a correct crystal for it. Um, but he had serviced the movement and then he went ahead and polished the case out like I told him not to. Um, so he didn't like, you know, polish the heck out of it to where he like, you know, ruined it completely. But it did have much better uh, case lines on it um, that you could see before he did that. Um, and then, you know, after, obviously, you can tell it's been smoothed out. So I wasn't very happy with that. But, you know, it's my dad's watching him, obviously, you know, keep it. And so, uh, you know, I had it and... I just, you know, wasn't happy with the job that that guy did and the fact that the crystal was still broken could get moisture in there. So I got a hold of uh, Spencer Klein, which I'm sure everyone's uh, familiar with um, from Klein Vintage Watch Repair. Uh, has a great YouTube channel where he, uh, you know, shares a lot of his knowledge with all of us. And I, I was lucky enough to sneak this in before he started, um, you know, having to, you know, slow down his work and not take any more jobs in because he's so over overloaded. And, uh, I was able to get this watch there uh, before that happened and uh, get it uh, completely restored by him uh, the proper way with a uh, you know, new crystal. And um, he was actually able to sell me a genuine Seiko uh, bracelet that was correct to this watch, but um, the you know, end links on it were uh, messed up and so you had to put spacers on it and stuff. And I just didn't like the way that that looked, so I ended up getting an aftermarket um, bracelet for it and use the original clasp um, from the bracelet that he uh, had um, put on it for me. And so, uh, you know, it's that's the only thing that's aftermarket on it is the uh, the bracelet. But, yeah, there's that watch. And uh, that's the uh, watch that my dad wore all the time. And when I was a kid, this is the watch that made me fall in love with watches because he always had this on and would take it off and let me play with it and... You know, I'm surprised that the chronograph wheel is still good in it because I used to, you know, start and stop it all the time. And, you know, that was, uh, that was my fun thing to do. And I, that was my, when my fascination with watches began and have continued to this day. And it was all thanks to this guy right here. My dad, this is us on vacation at the beach when, uh, I was just a wee little lad. And as you can see there, my dad is wearing the watch. Um, yeah, he was combing my hair before we went out. Look at that tan I had, man. I was like pretty much like, you know, sun-kissed golden boy right there. You can see my dad's tan. He had that all the time, though, from working. He always wore short sleeve t-shirts and worked out in the sun all the time, so he always had a tan. But this would be like around circa 85, I think. Maybe 84, 85, somewhere around there. Anyhow, he was wearing this watch. And now I'm wearing it. So anyhow, that's my state of the collection. And I uh, just wanted to share that with you guys. I hope you have a great and happy new year. Prosperous new year. And I hope 2020 is awesome. And as always, thanks for watching. This is 4.44 p.m. A.K.A. Nathan. Cheers.